you're definitely. I'm shout out to all you guys, man, because y'all been on the forefront with this, man, and the, you are the reason that people are talking about this and why this is in the front page. Well, on, on the front page of uh, YouTube and, and new media. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, Shout agenda. out to No Media of, all you know, day. And, and the entrepreneur, DBN, for well, starting. I appreciate, I appreciate it, Aki. Man. Thank you for calling right, in. man. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, like I said, shout out to DBN for being the entrepreneur of New Media. We're not here to create confusion. We're over here trying to restore order and maintaining it after old media corrupted this whole thing. Now, um, Last topic of the day, the last round of the day, Wilder versus Tyson Fury. How does the fight change due to the controversy and all the above from the PED and all of that? Now, what's going on? Because, of course, all this controversy is, an, is a negative light on the sport, is a black eye on the sport as a whole. However, when the third trilogy match come into fruition... It's going to translate to ticket sales and, and pay-per-view buys. And I think it's probably the biggest out of the three yet. Even though Tyson Fury KO'd Wilder the, se the second time, but because of all this controversy, it's going to, um, you know, create a lot of revenue. And that's part of what I was saying is the reason why I think Deontay Wilder haven't spoke on this whole subject and a lot of his team members, it's too much money on the line. So if he talks about it and Tyson Fury suspended, he lost money and he lost legacy because people will still remember Tyson Fury TKOing him, regardless of what you say. I don't care if he cheated or not. I don't care if they prove it 1,000% he cheated or not. Guess what they're going to say? Oh, he knocked your ass out, though. So Deontay Wilder knows there's too much money on the line. And this time around, I get to do things with my own hands, with my own right hand that I could erase history with. So can I do it? That's the million dollar question. So uh, what's your take on the trilogy match? Does all this controversy equal dollar bills or is it hurting the sport where maybe, maybe people want to in? Well, there's a range of different fans that are, uh, who tune in, who tune into the sport. I actually think for the casuals, um, I think that this just brings light to a subject. Um, I actually was, uh, talking to my brother today and his, um, uh, lady was with him and, you know, I was asking her about the fight. I was like, did you see the fight? She was like, no. And I was like, well, do you know about the controversy and stuff? She's like, yeah, I heard people talking about it. So there, that means that it's starting to transcend beyond the sport. So which, which could help. As far as the fight itself, um, I don't see a lot changing. Uh, a shout out to August Wynn that says that Tyson Fury's gloves will look completely different this fight. That's all you need to know. Uh, well, that's I'll, for sure. I'll, that's I'll, one thousand percent. I'll be looking out for that. But um, as far as um, Deontay Wilder hasn't um, progressed uh, much at all as a boxer in the last five six years. And I don't see how he's going to change much in five or six months against um, somebody who's been boxing since he was five years old. He should, though. So, he I mean, he should. I, I just don't see it. I, I don't know if he's wired that way. Yeah, well, see, this is the thing. Um, if Tyson Fury allegedly cheated with his glove gay situation, it definitely gave him a, a, too much of an edge in the first and second fight. So, ain't no teller what the third fight going to look like on an even playing field. However... Wilder need to treat this like nothing happened. Wilder need to treat this like Tyson Fury. There's nothing. Like, I don't care if people say uh, he was on contaminated me or uh, the glove gate situation. Wilder need to treat this like it took place. Like it was 100% natural. So he could improve. And Andre Wood talked about this before the whole controversy started. That way he maximized his chances to win. And he don't need no damn costume. I know he trained in a 40-pound costume during the fight. But regardless of that, don't come with no damn costume do, during the fight. Because you're going to need all the stamina you, you could get. Because I said this from day one. Tyson Fury is going to be Deontay Wilder's toughest opponent. Because he has the most skill. And he's the hardest man to hit. However, because of the glove safe situation, he kind of gave him self power that he didn't have. However... 
for Wilder to maximize his chance to win, he has to treat this like win or, you know, win or die. Because everything is on the line now. The fact that Wilder took the rematch show the kind of character he has as a champion because it only took one week for him to, to re-sign the rematch. I remember Anthony Joshua, who didn't make no mistakes. It took him a couple months, but Wilder took him one week. However, for him to put icing on the cake, he better put that right hand next to Tyson Fury chin. And that's all she wrote. But if not, it's going to hurt his brand. But he's still going to be um, a Hall of Famer regardless because he made 10 title defenses. But this fight is very important for his legacy. And Tyson Fury know that as well. However, the fact that Tyson Fury got to see Deontay Wilder two times already. He knows how fast he is. He already got his timing down packed. He always control the range, go back, put the right hand right there so he don't get caught with the right hand. Tyson Fury already got Deontay Wilder figure out. So Wilder has to do something new. But... Yes, it was. People say, you know, the glove gate. I'm one of the co-signers. But the only issue with that is Tyson Fury. Now, if he fight Deontay Wilder on an even playing field, regardless of him fighting him the first or second time with the glove gate situation, he already seen Wilder. He, he won't have that shock moment. Oh, this power is different, different. He won't have, oh, he his speed, his, he's too awkward. He already seen him before. So Wilder has to make adjustments and treat this like it all happened naturally. He cannot talk to himself and say, oh, he cheated. No. You got to act like, man, I, I got to improve. And that's all I'm saying. And if he does that, he gives himself the highest chance of knocking Tyson Fury out in the trilogy match. And it's going to be a lot of money because, like, like you said, a casual fan that didn't even watch the damn fight know about the damn controversy. But old media still choose to ignore it. They won't even mention it, but they talk about the costume and, and stuff like that. So what's your last take on that? And we're going to take calls and then end the show. Um, so I still see a guy. I'm not hating on Wilder. I just think that, I mean, I'm a, I'm a boxing, you know, saying I'm a boxing fan first. I mean, I always rock with my people, but I just see somebody who's a, a, a superior boxer. And I've never really seen Wilder. Make adjustments um, in the fight or even between fights. He seems to kind of have one mission on his mind. That's just to put that right hand against somebody's chin. So I think that this is a big fight for his legacy. Uh, if he gets uh, he gets beat twice, I'm not sure if he'll get knocked out. I, I, I think that you, you are right. He was shocked by uh, Tyson Fury's uh, very strong and positive going forward posture in the fight and it actually threw him off. I actually think mentally it, it drained him. It broke him down too. Yeah. But um I just, you know, besides knocking him out, I just don't really see how he could um beat Tyson Fury. Yeah, I mean like I said, that threw him off and it completely um threw off threw him off his game. But you have to realize if the glove gate situation is true then Tyson Fury really frustrated Deontay Wilder with the length. And even um, a, a UK commentator during the fight, I was re-watching the fight, and the UK commentator was like, man, Tyson Fury reach look longer than usual. His hands look so long. He was complimenting Tyson Fury, but I was like, man, he over here seeing what I'm seeing, but we know the glove gay situation. So if Tyson Fury did, of course, play with a glove, he could have frustrated Deontay Wilder as far as the range. So he like, man, I'm I'm on the safe side here. However, he getting smacked. So he like, oh no, nah. let me let me. I miscalculate the the distance. And Tyson Fury is fooling the shit out of him. So that could have came into play. And the fact that he hit him bare knuckle, like I said, but he has to treat it like nothing happened. Because if he don't, then it might backfire. Because you gotta prepare for Tyson Fury coming forward. And going backward. Because Tyson Fury already got your timing. He already felt your power. And he already know your style. So it's not as awkward. It's not. You ain't getting the benefit of the doubt of fighting your opponent for the first time. So they don't know what to expect. That benefits Wilder in my opinion. Since you got all that power. Like you said. You don't believe he, don't make, he makes all the adjustments. You believe. Which I kind of co-sign a little bit of what you say. As far as he waits. He, he's, he's so patient. That he waits for the kill. To strike and knock you out. 
However, he do make adjustments down the line a little bit, in my opinion. You know, but he not the most skillful man in the world. However, 30%, 40% of his opponents were more skillful than him, and he knocked them out. Yeah, so, uh, it, but Tyson Fury is that skillful, though. But Yeah, it's, so it's one thing. So, like I say, I don't, I have a different view regarding those allegations. And one of the things that I'll say is that I've, I've watched this fight at least two dozen times, and I've looked at it. Um, I've tried to be objective. I'm in there. But one thing that I think that, that gets lost is Tyson Fury fought a very, very good fight. He was doing, like, little subtle things. So if y'all go back and watch, when he first came out, Tyson Fury comes out, and he has this thing that he does where he just kind of, like, he just, you know, he's kind of, like, feigning. And, like, that is that that is beautiful and artful. And then somebody talked about him flicking. So that last one-two that he landed... That thing was a thing of art. All right, so he got he got um, like Wilder actually walked this up into a corner. So when he went out there, he went and he just kind of he tried to get a reaction out of Wilder. So he just went and flicked out his left hand, and then he stepped in with a one-two. Like that is high level supreme boxing, and I hope that doesn't get lost throughout all of this. Yeah, I mean, like I said, but. The, the main thing is, if you that good and that you that skillful, you don't have to resort to cheat. And Tyson Fury resorted to cheating in the past. And with the glove gate allegation situation, it's not a good look. I remember when you threw the best, like you were saying, you saw Tyson Fury the first time you ever, I think the first Deontay Wilder fight that was leading up to the pred prediction. I think it was episode 22. Mm -hmm. You was like, Tyson Fury, when you first saw him fight Wilder the first time, he threw a beautiful combination like jab, right hand, hook, or something like that. You, and and I know oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's was, the combination. He did. He did a, it was a five punch combination. And that, ironically, that's the same combination that started the glove gates <laughs> allegations. So I thought it was it's beautiful. like if you're that good, why you have to resort to cheating? Because even the cup man of that saved Tyson Fury ah for the Wallen fight. Why would you kick him out? That guy, his uncle was Margarito trainer that wrapped his hand. I don't know what kind of coincidence is that, but that's not a good coincidence. So I'm just saying it's not a good look, but we got the trilogy match for Deontay Wilder to rewrite his wrong and to put things back in order and write his own destiny, forgetting all the narratives that's written out there, whatever it is, he could restore all that with his own hand. Tyson Fury got the, the complexion for the protection and the hopeless, but at the end of the day, he did see Wilder twice. And now he knows what kind of power he's dealing with, the awkwardness and the speed. So that's kind of give Tyson right. Fury the advantage since he's the more skillful guy. And I, I got to admit that. But um, yeah, one thing I, I want to give out, shout out to um, Camacho. He's um, you know, a long time listener. He said... Can y'all talk about Tia Fimo versus Lomachenko? And he also made a comment about we've kind of been stuck around this for at least the last three weeks. Um, so I would love to talk about that fight. Yeah, um, but but we would definitely yet? take that. Have, have, they, have they announced the date or something? Because I, I know they was planning on making up for May, but um, they end up canceling because of the coronavirus. Again, yeah. it's, a, it's an issue. But we did talk about that fight on more than one occasion. I think that's a great fight. Um, it's too early to say. I got to see how both fighters look. Lomachenko should have the edge because of his experience factor. I mean, Lomachenko does all type of mind training. I ain't talking about physical. I'm talking about mental. Uh, he be playing with the ball, uh, no homo, but the speed ball. Um, he, he just has so many uh, mind training that help train your mind. Yes, the, the brain is not a muscle, but you must train it. You could, you could play chess. Boxing is chess. Mayweather tell you that all the time. I favor Lomachenko a little bit, but Lopez got that factor, which is the youth and the, the hunger and the fact that he don't believe nobody could mess with him. So it's a 50-50 fight, in my opinion. I'm just leaning a little bit toward Lomachenko because I've seen him more, and I know what he could bring to the table. However, Lopez, he impressed me, his last opponent's knocking out Kome. However, Lomachenko is a different beast. What's your take on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would, I'd usually like to go and kind of do some of my, my research. Initially, I think that, um, my head kind of goes with Lomachico just because of his record, his status, but I would, um, 
I would really like to go and um, kind of dissect their last um, three fights um, a piece and kind of see where they stand out. Um, there was some things that was uh, exposed about Lopez, but I don't think that uh, Lomachenko has that type of a stature to take advantage of those things. So there, there's, there's some other uh, qualities that Lomachenko has that might um, win the day, but... Um, Tall. Against Lopez, he was struggling against a very tall, tall opponent, opponent who was Super dropping tall. a right hand yeah. over that that left that that um, Lopez hangs low, and that doesn't that's not necessarily going to be. That's going to be the jab Lomachenko. for Lomachenko. That's yeah. going to be the jab, which it could work for Lomachenko. The fact that uh, Lopez got his hand down, that's not a good posture against a, a softball because Lomachenko could easily jab him all night. That's an easy target. That's the easiest punch to land. If you can't land the jab, you ain't gonna be land. You ain't gonna be able to land ish. But Lomachenko, if you let him land the jab, he's gonna set you up for all type of stuff because he's gonna take so many angles. And thanks, and because of Lopez is an orthodox fighter, he's gonna be able to do his favorite pivot move when he pivots to the right and takes angles and stuff like that. But with that being said, um, can you hit the bell, Professor Nam, to end the fight?